Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a really cool geometry puzzle by my fellow mathematician, Diego Rotagi. I hope I didn't mispronounce your name. So he shares a lot of great puzzles on his Twitter page. I'm going to include all the links down below so you can check it out. Okay. So we're given that the sum of the areas A plus B is minimal and we're supposed to find the difference A minus B. So let's go ahead and get started by making some connections here. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the centers. And then I will be making another connection here, which is also very important. Okay. Now, what we get here is actually a right triangle. So let's go ahead and take advantage of that. Remember, our, we're trying to minimize, or we know that A plus B is minimized. So let's see what happens. Uh, so let's go ahead and um, say that the radius of a is x and the radius of b is y so let's say this is the center so it's going to be y and this is going to be y as well this is where they touch so now we get a right triangle don't we and this right triangle is kind of cool because the hypotenuse okay i can hopefully get it back the hypotenuse is actually the radius of the semicircle the big one which is pi so that's kind of cool so this whole thing is pi, the hypotenuse. So I can just go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem here, right? So let's go ahead and write down what needs to be minimal. Okay. The area needs to be minimal. So let's go ahead and write down A plus B first. A plus B is going to be, A is a semicircle, so it's going to be pi times x squared divided by 2. And B is a full circle, so it's going to be pi times y squared. And we basically want this to be minimal, right? Okay. So we want to keep this minimized and given that what is a minus b, right? But we also have some constraints here. What is it? Well, using the right triangle, we can just go ahead and write down an equation, right? That's basically going to relate x and y. Let's go ahead and do that. So based on Pythagorean theorem, we have that x squared, by the way, this is also x, x squared plus x minus, I mean, plus 2y squared is equal to pi squared. Let's go ahead and expand this a little bit. x squared plus x squared is going to be 2x squared plus 4xy plus 4y squared is equal to pi squared. If you want, you can divide both sides by 2, I'm not, but I'm not just going to bother. So now, what is our goal? Okay, this is our constraint. This needs to happen, right? This needs to happen. And given this constraint... We're actually trying to minimize this, right? So, how do you minimize a given expression given a constraint, right? Well, we're just going to use a very interesting method here. It's, it's going to be different from the other puzzles uh, to, because this is kind of like a, I would say, what, calculus 2 problem? Okay, so the stuff that we're trying to minimize, let me go ahead and factor out a pi over 2 there, so I'm going to write it as pi over 2 multiplied by 2, okay, not 2, x squared plus 2y squared, okay. So this is the stuff I'm trying to minimize, and obviously pi over 2 is a constant, so it doesn't really matter, this is what I'm trying to minimize, because if I'm able to minimize this, then the product will also be minimized, right? Okay, so our problem basically comes down to this fact that minimize x squared plus 2y squared given the constraint 2x squared plus 4xy plus 4y squared is equal to pi squared. Now we can write this constraint as something that has zero on the right hand side. So put everything on the same side and this is going to be our constraint. So given this, we're trying to minimize x squared plus y squared. Unfortunately, there isn't a really smooth way to, or it's not going to be nice if you try to solve either x or y by the other term. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to use Lagrange multipliers. Okay, that's kind of like a cool method for these kinds of problems. Lagrange multipliers. And we don't actually need to find x and y. We only need to find, well, we just got to find the relationship between them first, right? So we can find... The difference in areas. Anyways, so we're going to use Lagrange multipliers and the way they work is basically we're going to define a function f, a function of two variables. 
which is going to include, which is going to include the stuff that I'm trying to minimize, which is x squared plus 2y squared. I just excluded the pi over 2 there. You can add it later. Minus lambda multiplied by our constraint, which is 2x squared plus 4xy plus 4y squared minus pi squared. Okay? All right, so we're going to try to use Lagrange multipliers here. And the way they work is we're going to be looking at partial derivatives. Okay? And there's different notations for partial derivatives. But since f is a function of two variables, I'm just going to use the f sub x notation for uh, the derivative with respect to x and with respect to y i'm going to use the f sub y now f sub x means that you're going to treat everything besides x as a constant so let's go ahead and differentiate this expression with respect to x only the derivative of x squared is going to be 2x uh, 2y squared is considered a constant so its derivative is going to be zero minus lambda is again a constant so I, what i can do is actually i can just pull keep the constant outside and differentiate inside the parentheses and just multiply by the constant because we have a constant rule that allows us to do it, right? Okay, what's the derivative of 2x squared? Well, we're differentiating with respect to x, so it's going to be 4x. The derivative of 4xy is you can think of it as 4y multiplied by x, so 4y is a constant, so its derivative is going to be 4y in this case, plus uh, 4y squared is a constant, pi squared is a constant, so that's it. And what we need to do to use Lagrange multipliers is that set the partial derivatives equal to zero. And obviously, we're going to be getting a system of equations from here. And by solving that system, we're actually going to get the answer. Okay? So, what I can do at this point is actually do a little bit of math. And let's go ahead and isolate some stuff. Uh, what I can do is actually I can solve for lambda, which will be helpful later. So let's go ahead and do that. Divide both sides by this and consider the fact that 2 is a common factor. So from here, lambda is going to be x divided by 2x plus 2y. So I was able to express lambda in terms of x and y. If I can do it again, then I can set those two equations equal to each other. Now, what's the next step in Lagrange multipliers to differentiate with respect to y? Because I'm supposed to find the partial derivatives and set them equal to 0. What is f sub y? So in this case, x in everything else is a constant x squared is a constant, so its derivative is 0. And then I'm just using the same equation here. The derivative of 2y squared with respect to y is obviously going to be 4y, right? Minus lambda. Again, I'm going to use the constant rule. The derivative of 2x squared is going to be 0 because we're differentiating with respect to y. And for the derivative of 4xy, you can just think of the 4x as the constant of y. So it's just going to be 4x. If you have, for example, something like 3y, the derivative of 3y with respect to y is just going to be 3, the constant, right? Okay, what is the derivative of 4y squared with respect to y? That's going to be 8y. And obviously, pi is always a constant, so that's it. Okay, awesome. And we're going to set it equal to 0 again. Now, let's go ahead and isolate 4y by adding. And this is going to give us lambda multiplied by 4x plus 8y. And again, if you use the same trick, isolate lambda divide both sides by 4x plus 8y, and divide both sides, the numerator and the denominator, by 4, actually, because that's a common factor, we're going to arrive at this solution, y divided by x plus 2y. So, now we know that from solving the system of equations that comes from the fact that the partial derivatives are equal to 0, we were able to get two expressions for lambda, right? Which means that they're equal. So let's go ahead and set them equal to each other and see what happens. So from here, we're going to get x divided by 2x plus 2y. And then that is equal to y over x plus 2y. Now, this might look a little complicated, like, okay, how do I handle that? Well, we got to do cross multiplication. x squared plus 2xy, and something nice is going to happen here, equals 2xy plus 2y squared. 2xy is going to equal... 0 minus uh, 2x, 2xy minus 2xy, cancel out, and we arrive at the solution x squared is equal to 2y squared. Okay, what is the significance of this finding? Now, let's go back to our expression, and let's see what we were trying to do. Okay, so our goal was to minimize this sum, right, a plus b, given this constraint. Okay, 
Now, we found that x squared is equal to 2y squared, right? That was our finding. So we can just go ahead and plug it in here, obviously, right? And then that's going to give us uh, one of the values, either x or y we can find from this equation. So we're going to get a quadratic, and we can just solve it. There's going to be some radicals, which we have to handle, all of that. Okay, that's going to be some algebraic trouble. But let's take a look at the question first. What was the question? Well, the question was, you have to find a minus b. Okay, what is a minus b? Let's take a look at it, right? Well, a is x squared divided by 2, right? a is x squared divided by 2. And b is y squared. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Let's make a common denominator. This gives us x squared minus 2y squared divided by 2. Now, notice that here, notice that here, we already have a relationship between x and y. If you replace x squared with 2y squared, what do you notice? You get 2y squared minus 2y squared divided by 2, which is equal to 0, which means that a minus b is actually equal to 0, which means those areas are equal. Okay, so in order for the sum to be minimal, those areas need to be equal. Thank you for watching. I want to say one more time, thank you, Diego, for the inspiration, for the idea. I love your puzzles. See you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.